Okay, this is video from just moments ago in Charlottesville, Virginia, where white nationalists are clashing with counter protesters at Emancipation Park. All right, we're. Oh, this is actually live pictures now. So we're looking at it live. You can see that there is a lot of uh, object throwing. Uh, apparently, according to one of our previous guests, Reverend Tracy Blackman, uh, the white nationalist groups are throwing full bottles of water. Earlier, they used brass knuckles and bats to attack members of the clergy, to attack members of anti-fascist groups who've come out to march against them and against members of Black Lives Matter, all of whom have converged on this park and now spilled into the street, a nearby corner uh, near the University of Virginia. Virginia to try to counter this, uh, what they're calling Unite the Right rally, a violent rally at that. Join me now, Max Boot, senior fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations, Kurt Bardella, former media consultant for Breitbart.com, Daily Beast politics reporter Aslan Subasang, and former chief White House ethics lawyer, uh, President for President George W. Bush, Richard Painter. Richard, I'm going to start with you. You've been tweeting about this, and you've had some pretty strong words for those who are out there. If you could reiterate those for our audience. Well, this is uh, very similar to what happened on the streets of Germany in the early 1930s. Uh, this is the face of fascism uh, in the United States. And it is directly the responsibility of this administration in the White House. I've been a Republican for 30 years, but we are the party of Abraham Lincoln and George W. Bush and Ronald Reagan. We are not the party of fascism in America, and we are going to have to reject this. We need to demand today that President Trump fire Sebastian Gorka, Steve Bannon, all the other alt-right neo-fascists in his White House. This is Breitbart News, what you are watching on the streets of Charlottesville. And, and, and I, as a Republican, I will remain a Republican, but I will not support fascism. And I will call for the impeachment of this president if he does not fire the neo-fascists in his White House immediately. And, Aswan, um, is there any, I mean, discomfort inside of the White House with the presence of Sebastian Gorka, who is linked to Vitezzi Ren, which is a, a Nazi-linked organization from Hungary, with the presence of Steve Bannon, who ran the website uh, where the alt-right found its home? Is there any chance that these people have job insecurity at this point? If they have any job insecurity, it has nothing to do with that or what's going on today. And look, I've covered a lot of these different white nationalist events and scuffles, uh, some of which have turned violent, and they're upsetting and disturbing whenever they happen. But uh, look, just to be mildly fair to the White House and President Trump for a moment, I think it's a little bit unfair to blame President Trump for stuff like this. I mean, if um, he doesn't denounce this on his Twitter feed while he's more than willing to denounce a botched or bloody facelift, then yeah, go ahead, call him out for that. But I think you're on way more fair and, and, and objective. I, I think you're, I think you're on way more fair ground if you uh, denounce this administration for its racist crackdown on voting rights or uh, the intention to uproot and kick out as many immigrant families as they want to. And by the way, those are policies that far predated Trumpism. And I would like to hear what Richard and Max have to say about those things that have been long a part of the Republican DNA long before President Trump came about and started saying vulgar words. Richard? I am happy to respond to that. I have not always agreed with everything that Republican administrations do, but we have never, ever seen rhetoric uh, similar to what has come out of this White House. We never had anyone like Steve Bannon or Sebastian Gorka in the Bush White House, someone like Sebastian Gorka who dared to wear a Nazi medal to the president's inauguration. That is disgusting. We never would have tolerated that. And we can disagree. I disagree with my own party on some issues. But we never would have had any of this in the Bush White House. And these people need to be fired immediately. And this is Breitbart News. Breitbart News is a racist organization, and it needs to be acknowledged as such. They should not be given preferential access to the White House, which is what they are now getting under Steve Bannon. And once again, Bannon needs to be fired. Sebastian Gorka and the rest of the fascists out, or we are going to have to remove this president. Our democracy depends upon it. And talking about President Bush or Hillary Clinton and trying to compare this, that is, that is a completely inappropriate comparison to what really is a serious threat to our democracy in 2017. And Max, same, same, uh, give you a chance to respond as well. Is it sort of unfair to tie the president to what we're seeing here in Charlottesville? Well, I don't think that President Trump is directly responsible for instigating, you know, the events in, in Charlottesville, but I think it is fair to say that he has catered 
to the alt-right crowd, including by hiring some of their champions in the White House, by pursuing policies like uh, not only the crackdown on uh, illegal immigration and, and mass deportations, but also he wants a crackdown on legal immigration, which is something that Republicans, going back to Ronald Reagan, have always favored, and all of a sudden Trump is opposed to it. He wants to challenge affirmative action in court. So there is no question that he is pursuing policies that, uh, that, that elicit support from people like this, even though he's not directly responsible for what's going on here. And, you know, I agree with Richard Painter, somebody who was also a lifelong Republican up until November 9th. I mean, I was a foreign policy advisor to John McCain, Mitt Romney, Marco Rubio. I mean, I couldn't imagine any of those uh, men in the White House employing somebody like Steve Bannon or, or Sebastian Gorka or trafficking in some of the hatred or conspiracy mongering that Donald Trump traffics in. This is not what the Republican Party has stood for since its founding in the 1850s. This is a uh, you know, there, there have been these fringe elements out there all, 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 all the time, but, I, you know, the, the difference with Trump is that he's brought them into the center of power. And, Kurt, you know, uh, and by the way, you, if, you see, if you think you're seeing guns in the hands of people, you are. Virginia is an open carry state. You're seeing more clashes. Just producer, is this live or is this tape? Is this live? This is live. This is happening right now. You're seeing these clashes, and some of the people that are in the streets of Charlottesville are armed. You've seen people carrying long guns. This is an open carry state. So this is an incredibly dangerous situation, incredible violence. It's shocking to me personally, just uh, having been in Baltimore, that the police presence is so scant. Uh, when we were in Baltimore, um, there were tanks on the streets of Baltimore. We are seeing a rather thin police presence when we're seeing actual violence and from reports that we've gotten on the ground, including violence against clergy people against members of the clergy. Um, I want to go to you on this, Kurt Bardella, because that is sort of the question, right? I mean, you had the Republican Party bring in, um, the, starting with Nixon's Southern strategy, this idea of co-opting what used to be Southern Democrats who objected to Lyndon Johnson's moves on civil rights, who objected to the idea uh, of desegregation and sort of courting them and saying that there is a silent majority that is for law and order and sort of softly, um, you know, in softer language targeting people of color and immigrants, et cetera. We know there was a reaction against the Immigration and Nationalization Act of 65. We know that pulled certain elements out of the Democratic Party and into the GOP. Did Breitbart do something substantially new in terms of what that entity and entities like it brought to the table? I think what they brought to the table was for the first time in the 21st century in, in a digital era, they brought together a congregating central platform to unite all of these voices, uh, racist voices, and, and, put, and channel them and direct them and focus them in one place every day that they could go multiple times a day and have content that was written solely for them to make them feel like it was okay to feel the way that they feel, to inspire them to take action, to inspire them to rally behind a candidate that, that they thought was one of their own, uh, who, who uses coded language, who, who, who brings on people inside his team, uh, who subscribe to their beliefs. And, and really, they use policy as a mechanism to spread the virus uh, of racism you know, and, and targeting minorities and immigrants and, and laying the groundwork for volatile situations like this to happen. And the fact of the matter that, that, that President Trump at this second has yet to speak about this tells you that every, every second that goes by that President Trump is silent and it's not like he's too busy. He's out on vacation, golfing, tweeting. There's no reason why, after what happened last night, that the White House would be silent, if not for the fact that they are sitting there letting this happen. The longer they go silent, the more complicit that they are. And, and Asa, when you know, you know, in, 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 to that point, when you know, when the Ferguson uprising took place, and again, there were tanks in the streets, water cannons, mm -hmm. lots of arrests, including of journalists. Uh, President Obama, who was at the time it was summer, he was on vacation in Martha's Vineyard, had to come to a camera and say something. Uh, you know, the fact that the President of the United States has yet to say anything when there is. Literal violence in the streets of an American city, isn't it fair to say that the President of the United States is suborning, at minimum, this kind of behavior? He has the alt right working for him in the West Wing. Well, I'm not sure if suborning is entirely fair, but look, it obviously would be incredibly nice if the President of the United States 
would come out and denounce what we're all seeing on our TV screens right now. It would also be nice if he didn't threaten Venezuela with potential military action. It, it is a no matter of it reason. being nice, but, though. I mean, a president of the United States, when any when, when any kind no, of I, violence I happens in American you. city, it's I, not a matter of it being nice. It's what a president normally does. Yes, yes. I, I, I agree with you 100% on that, that the president of the United States should do that. But obviously, the president right now is Donald J. Trump. So the rule book kind of goes out the window. But in terms of actual policy, um, you had your my co-panelist right now just saying that um, President Trump needs to sack Gorka. He needs to sack Bannon. Um, what about, I wonder what uh, Mr. Boot or Mr. Painter or Mr. Bardella thinks about Jeff Sessions. Are, are, are they saying that with those people need to be cleared out of the administration, Jeff Sessions needs to be too? It's a fair because point. Absolutely. He's because, a because policy Absolutely. wouldn't change well, if Jeff, you kick Gorka Jeff Sessions out. Is a, is a sort of unusual case right now, as we know, and I, I am no fan of Jeff Sessions, but remember, uh, if, if he is forced out of the attorney general's seat, Donald Trump has the potential to appoint somebody who will fire Bob Mueller. So all things considered, I think most Democrats and, and most Republicans at this yeah. point think that Sessions needs to stay where he is. But I mean, I still disagree with his policies. Yeah. Clearly, he is somebody who's embraced this populist nationalist agenda, which I think is for anathema for true conservative Republicanism. And, and, and has done for a very I long agree. time, yeah. way before Donald Trump uh, yeah. was even uh, on the bandwagon. All right, let's go. We have to take a break. Uh, we're going to have more on this story after the break. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.